Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Nero, and we have received a lovely viewer replay here. They wanted to get some tips on Dota 2. This is a Herald level game. The player in question hewed in as vengeful spirit for this game. I'm not a professional Dota 2 gamer, but you know, I have a couple thousand games under my belt. I think I'm almost at 3,000 games. Let's see what people do this game. So we're looking at Zack Attack TV. I believe this uh, name was indicating your Twitch name, which is cool. That's what TTV stands for. Can I just look at player camera? That seems good. Player view. All right. Nice. This is our hero here. Success or failure depends on this player's moves. Starting out, we're kind of just chilling there, looking at the potential spot. Maybe could help with the fight like that, but maybe we're just, maybe we're just meditating. Okay. So that's an important death to have play out. So you're dealing with your kiddos. Gotcha. So a good reminder there is just whenever you need to idle your character, try to think about being in a safe spot. I know sometimes there's kid aggro or cat aggro or whatever it can happen. That reminds me of a question that some people asked. Uh, they were saying, hey, I'm a parent. What is the best class or race for me to play in World of Warcraft? And everyone was saying Night Elf because you can shadow meld to keep your character invisible. Okay, let's look at your laning stage. Shadow meld, just turning invisible in the woods. You can go AFK, take care of your kids, come back to your character, you didn't die. Pretty good. So same thing, uh, just be by a tower if you're AFK. Okay, so we'll just say that that was chalked up to real life stuff coming up. Don't need to be mad that happens. Putting your family first is a good thing, so hats off to you. Hats off to you prioritizing family. So your whole mindset as a support in the early game here with your carry is you want to apply pressure to these enemy heroes and you want to keep this lane as close to this tower as possible. So anytime you're doing those things, you're doing great. You can do so by leveraging the camps and pulling stuff to make sure it stays near your tower but you basically want to be dishing out as much damage <clears throat> to the support and then to the offlane as you can. Um, the build that you have here is, I would say, very selfish. Gloves of Haste would be something that builds into Hand of Midas or something of that nature, which you're basically saying, oh wait, no, this is Legion Commander. Legion Commander went Gloves of Haste first? Okay, let's not get hung up on other people's mistakes. We're helping Zack attack. Okay, Zack attack, your item build is pretty good. I like this actually. It glitched out with the portrait, so I thought that was you. My mistake. So you've got circlet, couple branches, magic stick, a sentry ward, and tangos. Cool, so I like your items. Let's see what we do here. Rather than trying to focus on hitting this guy and this guy, your first job is to win this support war. What'll happen a lot in these uh, safe lane, off lane situations is the off laner and the carry fight and then the supports fight. That's super normal. So you should actually, instead of like veering into the lane here, instead of being in this clump of stuff, you should be fighting with Warlock over access to these camps. Cause that's your primary objective is to control this area. The carry and the off lane are contesting this area here on the outside of the lane. You're fighting for the inside of the lane. So if you run into alchemist stuff, you're gonna be taking damage from two heroes. So you basically just wanna to try to beat Warlock in a damage duel if you can, which is hard. He's a hard character to face. And then another thing, just as a reminder would be, you wanna to try to make sure you don't go in to trade don't go into trade HP unless you're above 70% health. 
And if you want to be aggressive and dive in here, like there's action going, then eat a tango and then go in and fight so that you have some health regen through the aggression. Right here, we're topped off, but we're about to take damage. And you can only accept two of their spells and like six hits from them, and then you die. So given that, you want to be able to dip in, take some damage, use a regen, and get out. But you don't want to be hard committing to stuff at level one. You don't really have the tools to do that. So I like the idea of being aggressive here, but you didn't really have regard for your own well-being. And the tower wasn't really close enough for you to fall back to either. Uh, not everyone knows this, but the tower gives an aura, so you get armor if you're close to a tower, and I think you also get health regen. Let's actually check that. Do these guys get it? Maybe it only applies to heroes. Never. Let's see when you TP back. Yes, yeah, stay healthy and topped off. Before you go into a fight, you should try to top off beforehand. <clears throat> okay, so you got a magic wand. You have a circlet still. It was harass carry more. No, you don't usually harass the offlaner more. Like, you take whatever damage you can get, of course, but you don't work on the offlaner while the support is just beating the shit out of you. That's like trying to beat up someone and being tunnel visioned on beating them up and someone else is actively punching your face. Like, you should deal with the person who's punching you before you fuss about punching someone else. And the warlock is punching you. So you should be over here. Should be more on the inside of the lane. You want to get out of that stuff if you can. Oh. Oh. Huh. I don't know if that ward helped anything, but it's okay. So now I would say you should be focusing on trying to fix the lane positioning because this is the very worst possible place to have the lane for your team. For the enemy team, it's the best because they're right next to their tower. So I would prioritize pulling this camp into the lane or this camp into the lane. So lane positioning is everything. Getting a kill is cool. My brother was pointing this out a while back. This, these pools, this area right here, and this area right here, are one of the highest percentage places to be killed and to not be able to escape. Because there's no way out from this pool except up these stairs. So you're low ground and limited to one path. That's like, has anyone here seen, uh, what's it called, Inglorious Bastards? In Inglorious Bastards, he says, you don't have to be fucking Stonewall Jackson to know you don't want to be in a goddamn basement or something along those lines. This is the basement. This is the worst place you could step. The only time you should step in there if it's to kill someone and then step out. But yeah, it's a bad pool. The lane was in a very bad place too. Sometimes you can see red and there's a fight happening so you just really focus on the fight but if you have the mental time, you should ask, is this where we should take the fight? Because ideally you take a fight that gives you an option to retreat if you want to. That makes you really dangerous, where you could be aggressive or defensive. In a situation like that, you could only commit to the aggression and you didn't have a defensive option. So pushing this creep wave. So your positions actually should be reversed here. You should be with these creeps contesting this, and your carry should be allowed to farm the wave by the tower. So this is kind of your carry's mistake, I guess, for them to run over here and contest this as a melee. I feel like they're gonna die here. Oof. Oh, so close. Oh, so close. <sighs> they eat the tango. Okay. Okay, so the lane is in a relatively good place now. It's closer to your tower than theirs. Cool. Radiance middle tower. 
Centaur is being attacked. Nice. You don't want to deal attacks to the opponent when you have 18 creeps attacking you. Just as a note, I know sometimes it's like, I want to damage their carry. That's a good idea. It's good to damage their carry or their offlane. This is an offlane, I guess. But you shouldn't do so while eight creeps are hitting in the face. You need creep support. Creep support is important. This is Herald. Don't be mean, Chad. These are not high level games. These people are trying to figure out Dota. And we're trying to help them out. You can enjoy the game at any level. Here in Herald, we're learning about how to prioritize damage versus staying alive. We need to stay topped off. I would say anytime you're at half HP, you should prioritize regen. Because a lot of these deaths are when you're already mortally wounded. Alchemist is going for a Midas. Midas first item is super greedy, but he's getting away with it. He can't keep getting away with this. What's with Nero's voice today? So smooth. Marco Yolo, thanks for being here. What is with the voice today? What sort of prize is this? Three kills and nine last hits is insanity. Yeah, he's a wealthy individual. A wealthy individual. Okay, Zack attack. Still alive up here. We really need to prioritize regen. It should be like alarm bells ringing off of like, alert, alert. Health level's critical. A strong wind and a smelly fart and we're dead. Alert. You know what I'm saying? Get topped off. Get those boots to you ASAP. It's the uh, courier deliver your items button down here in the bottom right. That should be hotkeyed. And then also the quick buy feature should also be hotkeyed. I have this, it's called quick buy. It's hotkeyed to Y for me. And then I just have courier deliver set to V. So I can press Y, 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 and I just buy all the items from my boots. And then I hit V and bring them to me. Delusion. And then another thing that's kind of advanced, but it makes for really nice support to have with you in lane, is if they hit control and then click a tango and then click you, they can give you one tango. So if you have a legion commander like this, who's just really hurt and they don't have any regen, if you give them one or two of your tangos from your tango stack, that can improve your odds of winning the game. It's a selfless thing to give the ally some of your own regen. But that's one of the things that makes a really good support is being generous and saying, hey, Carrie, I know you need gold more than I do because your abilities and levels and stuff scale with gold. So I'm going to give you one of my tangos here. More. Yeah. This is good, though, because we've we've discovered a fundamental um, fundamental skill of the game that needs to be prioritized. And this applies for both you and whoever's playing Legion Commander here. And that's to really make sure that you try to get yourself topped off before you start fights or even show in lane. Because the lead up to this, we're, we're hurt for a long time. Like pretty much from here, we want to run north and get out of this and then prioritize healing. Just run directly out of this. The top tower, by the way, too, the top tower is going to die at some point between 7 minutes and 11 minutes, pretty much every game. So you should look at this tower as something that you're willing to step away from and watch it fall to live, than to like stubbornly think that you should keep this as long as possible. Sometimes it's just more elegant to just say, okay, the enemy team committed three people up here. I'm just going to let them take the tower. I'm going to focus on regen. I'm going to look at the mini map and maybe try to join a fight somewhere else. You can absolutely give up a tower, especially if you're in the safe lane. For me as the carry, I'll often just have left the lane by like nine minutes or sometimes earlier if the lane is bad. Warlock's upheaval ability does a lot of damage too. And then wand. The wand is an item you're saying you rely on this too much for healing. This gives 15 health and mana. But if you look at your health bar and your mana bar, 
uh, you have relatively twice as much health as you have mana. So the magic wand is something that more so restores your mana, relatively speaking, than it restores your health. So think of the magic wand as a mana tool and a slight health tool, but primarily a mana tool. So you want to offset that by getting tangos. You might be able to cut some clarity potions because your abilities don't really cost a ton of mana as a vengeful spirit. But yeah, you can't rely on this for healing. This does heal you, which is nice. 14 health regen. Very nice. Nice D ward. Nice D ward, but we needed to be topped off. We needed to be topped off. Enemy team is very ahead. Everyone is new at some point, that's true. That's the thing that's so silly about people who are rude to new players is that person who's being rude was a new player at some point. At some point in time, they were new. And if they received that same treatment, they would be like, hey, that was mean. But I guess some people just believe in hazing. They believe that hazing is a good thing. Or gatekeeping, I'm not sure. At the 15 to 20 minute else, he was 15 deaths in. Yeah. I think if top lane had like three more stacks of tangos over the course of the first 10 minutes of the game, you would not have died. Potentially at all. Yeah, the upheaval makes winning the duel really hard. Oh, that's good. Whoa, he buys back. He TP's in. Run. Uh. Wow. What a gamer. He bought back and then got a kill. As an offlane alchemist. I guess that's fine because his gold income is really high. Legion Commander bought back as well? This is something. This is pretty funny. I like the enthusiasm. It does kind of make me think of the general question of like, when is the ideal time to buy back? Because supports buying back in the early game like that is pretty common. Nope. Who's winning the duel? Okay, they're super dead. So we're floating gold after our tranquil boots, which shows me that you don't really know what your next items are going to be, or at least it's not very memorized. Because you could have a wraith band right now, or be part of the way to this. Vice, you could have a ring of protection, fluffy hat, stuff like that. So the, the gold spending should be pretty tight, kind of how in StarCraft you want to make sure your money is low. Having 780 in the early game is way too high, because you want to have small items that are being completed here. Like your magic wand, that's great. Uh, this could be completed into a wraith band or something, or whichever of those items you want. And then uh, making sure you have a neutral. Does your team have any yet? Maybe you don't. Maybe you don't, it's okay. Yeah, spend your gold. Spend your gold, get small items early for your support. Radiance Middle Tower is being attacked. If you're a carry as well, get your items. No more middle tower for Radiant. One thing I would also like to see a lot more of is just looking at the mini-map, especially as a Vengeful Spirit, this is, um, free camera. This is one of the best heroes for just dropping into any fight and being able to contribute something. So anytime there's a fight bottom or mid that's favorable to your team, you can just TP in and then minus armor nuke and then stun. And that increases the chances of a kill by a lot. You've been very much respecting the, I'm the hard support and I lane top 
and you've been going top every single time. But going to the other lanes, you get a lot of kill opportunities and you also give your carry more solo XP. So not saying that there was a particular one that you really should have joined, but that's something that Vengeful Spirit in particular is good at. And as a support, you should, I feel like, try to leave your lane at around 10 minutes. Just because that's when the enemy team is getting strong with their level 6 spells and stuff. Okay. Got the Alk. Got the duel. Get the nuke. Get the nuke. Get the nuke. Get the... Oh. Okay. This has uh, 4 armor reduction at 2nd rank, so the Legion would have won the duel if you cast Wave of Terror. Just so you know, Wave of Terror is a very strong minus armor ability. Yes, it does have a nuke component of 80 damage, but the 4 armor reduction would really help Legion Commander. And just your auto attacks. How is Omni Knight doing as a support? He's usually played as an offlane, actually. I feel like an offlane or a mid more often than he's a support. Because he's a strength character and he hits pretty hard, so him having items I feel like is more crucial than if you're maybe an int based support. Omni is a strong support. Strength is his stat. Okay, you're getting a solar crest. Cool. Dyer's middle tower taking damage. Still recommend finishing the circlet into an item of some kind. Dyer's bottom tower is being attacked. Yeah, this fight is pretty deep. <laughs> A double slaughter. <laughs> yep. That fight was lost because we took it uh, basically in the best place for the enemy team. Not the best place, but a very good place. This tower should usually fall first. So for your team's perspective, if you're behind, it's going to be a really hard sell to push this tower because it's so far away from your safest point here. But from here to here is a lot more feasible. So trying to prioritize rotating to the other lane and helping open up a tower and then remember every multiple of seven get the wisdom get the wisdom Yeah, that's a tough one. Your team is very behind now, so it's going to be hard to make stuff happen. Stacking camps can be good for letting your carry catch up. Legion isn't really the best at farming camps, so stacking is relatively maybe less strong. Okay, you're back in. There's a big fight here. Nice. They got the tree. Two innocent lives taken. Wait, AFK for a second. Taking a quick break. Quick break of it. We Legion gets the duel. Going on here. Okay, we're back. TP mid, TP mid. TP mid, save them. Save them, TP mid. Oh no. Oh no. So yeah, the broad strokes of what we need to work on so far are stay topped off with regen. Anytime we're below 70% HP, we eat a tango. And then TP into other lanes more often. You don't need to be t super stuck with your lane for a long time. You're only really committed to the laning phase for like 8 minutes, 8 to 10 minutes tops. And then you can go mid, you can go bottom. Oh no. Oh no. Dyer's middle tower has 
fallen. At the 10 minute mark, start looking. I would say the eight minute mark. At the eight minute mark, just keep an eye on the other fights on the mini map. Because if you see any favorable fights that are near your team's towers, teleporting in and getting a stun and a minus armor nuke is super strong. Supports need to be flexibly looking for favorable fights. Favorable fights. Carries need to be flexibly looking for favorable farm. They did kill the Faceless Void there. Could have been better. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Nice. Get that, yep. Get that, yep. Oh no! <laughs> okay, he's pretty strong. He's not gonna die to the tower. Get the Wind Ranger. Get the Wind Ranger. They're right there. Oh, no. we're scared. Run! Can you bait them? Ooh, they're going around. Interesting fight. Throw your nuke. Your nuke gives vision. You could throw your nuke and then you're stunned. Okay, they're going on him. Get your minus armor nuke. Minus armor. Oh no. Minus armor is so important. Also, don't stun people as much during the Legion ult. It's better to minus armor them because the Legion has a counter attack ability. So she's gonna be getting less damage if her dual target is stunned. She also has blade mail, so you're also reducing the damage she's doing with blade mail. So yeah, do the minus armor, prioritize that hardcore whenever there's a duel. Minus armor, so strong. Legion's trying to get some items here. Armor first, then stun. The nuke is also way longer range as well. The range of this is crazy strong. Yeah, you're getting your items. You're getting your stuff. Ah, this will come in handy. Clear and vision, nice. Dyer's nice. Under fire. Dyer's bottom tower is bottom tower. One thing you can do a little bit more with your camera too, and this is feedback that I've also received, is look at the fight ahead of what your character is doing a little bit more. Sometimes you double tap on your hero a lot and that's going to center the camera on them, but some of the time you want to kind of just keep your character by the tower, but then have your camera looking at the enemy heroes to see if you have an opportunity. Going back to play a view here. Trying to clear these wards here, vampire fangs for Mr. Centaur wall runner. Getting some bounty runes. This is all good and well. You have your solar crest. Please finish this circle. It. Please, Bilbo. It's so good. Oh, did you save the squirrel? Oh, and the stun. You saved the squirrel. You could have also solar crested them. Solar crest, very good. Very good. It gives them seven armor, 70 attack speed, 15% movement, and a 400 HP barrier. This is insanely strong. Oh my gosh. Wow. It even gives you the barrier on yourself if you self-cast it. Jeez Louise. Costs 100 mana though, kind of pricey. Takes a good deal of magic to cast that one. Okay. So you're getting the shard next. So your magic missile bounces. Okay. 
I wouldn't say that's good, but it does exist, and it does something for you. Oh, Legion buys back. Okay, we're thinking about our life choices up to this point. Gonna TP in. Oh. That's another thing you could do, is just cast your nuke uphill at the camp, and just check. That's another thing that this ability... You should think of Wave of Terror as a vision tool. You can just throw it in a direction and it fills a vision in that direction. A lot of spells you can't do that. So that's a unique asset of this ability. You have minus armor and you have vision. Vision duration is four, look at this. Wow. Such a powerful vision tool. Oh, nice. Nice. Nice! Oh my gosh. It's minus 11 armor. What is? This? Minus 6 armor? Wave of Terror? Pretty good. Pretty strong! I feel like Aghanim Scepter is better than Aghanim Shard on Vengeful Spirit. Your loyalty will be rewarded. The thing that's nice about Scepter as well is it has really good stats for its cost. So you just get a good amount of health and mana and agility and strength and stuff. It's nice. Oh man, nice swap. Good job. Good job. Yeah, so I would say even though your team is behind, you do have a way to secure kills with Legion dueling people and Centaur giving you guys a speed boost to run in and get a pick and get out. That's the thing with low-level games, or even mid-level games, is they're always winnable if the team can work together. Because the enemy team has a pretty high chance of having some kind of meltdown. So if you can just remain stable <laughs> and play Dorda like a normal person, sometimes you end up winning. So many toxic slark carries that I've seen that get super ahead and then they fountain dive and die and it's a huge gold swing back to you. Hubris is strong. Don't give up. There's a lot of hubris. Dyer's middle tower is, being attacked. is this actually an hour and a half game? Why does it say that's only this far in? Jeez. Nice. Nice play. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Okay. In concordance with the rules of data, Onage has been initiated. Hmm. Another item that's specific to countering Faceless Void that you can just weave in, and this is good to get on supports because it basically means you can't be killed during a chrono, is Aether, not Aether Lens, um, Heckin, what's it called? Heckin, what's it called? It's called... Ba -ba 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 a on desk, a disc. It started with an A, that's why. An AE, even. Okay, this is the item. 250 health, 300 mana, the passive is Combo Breaker. When you take damage and your health falls below 70%, a strong dispel is applied, and you gain 2.5 second buff that provides 75% status resist and causes all damage you deal and or dealt to be reduced to zero. Only triggers on player-based damage. Cooldown increases every time it triggers. So, what this means is, if Faceless Void chronos you and gets you below 70% health, it activates and then he does no damage to you.
for 2.5 seconds. No damage to you, which hurts him so bad because he needs his chrono to get kills. So just keep that in mind. If you're against a jacked Faceless Void, or even just a late game Faceless Void carry, that's a super good item to pick up at some point. Super good item. The Boots of Bearing are cool, but I feel like they don't help you with the problems at hand. The problems at hand. In late game, it won't work two times. Correct, but you do what you can, you know. If you're dealing with a kitted out refresher faceless void, that's just how Dota goes sometimes, isn't it? Isn't it? Okay. So the enemy team is beginning to throw. Good. This would be a pretty good time to think about starting to set up your vision for Roche. I don't think Roche has been killed yet this game. So daytime, Roche is south, nighttime Roche is north. Oof. Sniper on the high ground in the base is very good though. Yeah, Venge can swap someone out of Chrono. True. True. Your Legion has made a lot of plays. She does counter quite a few of their heroes. Can you get the Faceless Void? He's very quick. Dyer's mid town. Dyer's mid Yes. We get it. Oh, the shield rune. This is so good. Let's get it. Let's get him. Alright, we're in the late game. What are we doing? We're getting the Boots of Bearing. We have no vision aside from a little bit top. Oh, the heckin' Warlock has an Aeon Disc. Okay, so their whole team is there. Every coin helps. It's good that you have detection in the base. Uh... Yeah, we didn't really have the window of opportunity to get that kill and then get out, but it's okay. That actually ended up being good for your team. That's the great thing about playing support, is as long as you get your spells off and you set up something good, it doesn't really matter that much if you die, because you don't really give away that much gold when you die. So dying is less pressure than if you're playing carry. As long as you get your spells off. Which you did there. And now your team has the upper hand. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh! They just barely beat the Faceless Void. Ooh, so close. So close. Now they have to run from the heckin' golems. Venge needs Aghanim because she's one of the best bait heroes. Yeah, Aghanim Scepter is definitely a super strong item on her. She gets... It's almost like having two lives. I don't think you get XP when you're in Illusion, but you can cast all your spells normally. You just can't use items. Vengeful's uh, Scepter is very strong. Also remember to update your neutral items. I think you can get a tier 3 right now. A tier 4 soon. Soon-ish tier 4. Yeah, I think you guys got this. I believe you've got it. Double damage. Double damage. Oh. 
Centaur going in, blade mail. Sniper gets a couple kills. Faceless void. Gets dueled, oh no. Yeah, duel is such a counter to Faceless Void. It's such a long disable that prevents him from using his rewind. What does he even have? He's pretty stacked. Why does he not have his treads? Isn't that still good? Agi treads, super good. No? Damn. Yeah, they needed a Lincolns for sure. Being able to avoid getting swapped and stuff would be great. Tier 3 was 35% tunic and you figure your neutral was better. Uh, the percentage thing means that's how many of your uh, people who play that hero choose that item. It's how popular it is. So 35% of people choose the elven tunic as their tier 3. I don't think anyone really keeps a tier 2. The tier 3 items just have way more stats on them. Man, what an epic game. I don't know why no one ever thought to fight Roche. Roche is probably out there in his cave just all alone, like, guys? Guys? Battles raging on. Has Roche even died this whole game? Hold on. Hold on, this is this is not for coaching, this is for me. Roshan gets to fight now! He finally gets action. I'm so happy. He was alone and bored for 50 minutes, but then the Legion Commander was like, Roche, Roche, I'm gonna fight you. Just so you don't get bored and feel left out. Nice. So you got Megas, you got Aegis. It's pretty over. Sniper is a good hero for being able to make a comeback and defend on the high ground. So even though you lost all of your high ground tier 3 towers, you still have four of your racks out of six. So it's not too bad. Oh no. The golems. Don't forget that minus armor on the golems. Nice game. GG question mark. Are you serious? Do you guys not get the throne down? Wait, why does it say there's all this extra game after? Did someone stay in the game? Did you realize that all of this happens after the game? I think the warlock, yeah, he just respawned. The couriers are still flapping in the wind. Wow, okay, I didn't know there's so much dead time at the end of a Dota game, that's funny. Well, cool. So my advice for Zack Attack, thank you for submitting this replay for some review. Point number one, keep tangos on you. Keep yourself topped off and your carry topped off. Say two stacks of tangos to three stacks of tangos is pretty normal to just stay healthy, to allow yourself to be aggressive and to make sure you don't get chased whenever you're already hurt. So tangos early on. Another one is finish your small items, like your circlet could have been a wraith band, the Wraith Band, Null Talisman, and Bracer all gain stats at 25 minutes in. So if you make a component of them, you might as well finish it by 25 minutes. They're cheap items that have good stats for their cost. So get that item. And then also just looking at the minimap for opportunities to teleport in and help with the fight elsewhere as a support, especially after like seven to eight minutes in the game, whenever your carry kind of wants space to themselves anyway and your tower's gonna fall anyway, look for those other kill opportunities. And then I would say prioritize communicating to your team to kill Roshan. If you guys get a bunch of kills on the enemy heroes and feel like it's safe to do so, Roshan makes it a lot easier to push down a lane five versus five and still get a tower. 
that's another objective your team could have grabbed more of but overall good game nice comeback your team was very behind you didn't even end up with more kills than the enemy team total so pretty cool well played zack attack and i hope you enjoyed this uh, analysis cheers